Hey, I'm Sandro, and today we're going to be building this AB switch foot pedal with two LEDs, and I'm going to show you how I did it myself. Okay, so to start this project, you're going to need a couple of materials. The first thing that you're going to need is a box or a container to hold all of the contents in. In my case, I'm just going to use this leftover shell from an old foot pedal that I repurposed. The second thing you're going to need is a DPDT foot switch. You can get these at your local electronics store or possibly your local music store. Now a good way to ensure that you're buying the right switch is to flip it over and to look for six separate pegs on the back of it. The next thing that you're going to want to get are three quarter inch input jacks. Now it's important that at least one of the three inputs is a grounding input. The reason for this is because I completed the project with three standard mono inputs and I had found that I had grounding issues. The standard mono inputs have two pegs, one for the sleeve and one for the tip. On the grounding input there's three pegs. The third peg touches the tip which acts as a ground for the signal. You're also going to need two resistors for the LEDs. The resistors that you use depend on the LEDs that you're lighting, so you should do your research to find out which resistor works best for you. You're also going to need two LEDs, which I'm going to be taking from this old wireless headphone receiver. And you're also going to need a 2.1mm DC jack. You're going to also need some wire, which I'm recycling from an old guitar. And you're going to need a soldering iron with, of course, some solder. Alright, so before we begin, let's take a look at the schematic. The first thing that you're going to want to do is to solder the resistors onto the positive ends of your LEDs. The next thing you're going to want to do is to solder the positive end of your DC jack onto the first middle peg of your switch. From here, you're going to solder the other middle peg onto the tip of the grounding input. We're then going to take the positive ends of both LEDs with the resistor on it and attach it to the green and purple pegs labeled on this diagram. The next thing we're going to want to do is to solder the tips of both of the mono inputs onto the orange and yellow pegs on the switch. Then we're going to take the negatives from the DC jack and both of the LEDs and we're going to solder it all to the sleeve of the grounding input. And to finish off the pedal, we're going to take the sleeves of the other two mono inputs and we're going to also solder that to the sleeve of the grounding input. Now I've made a PDF of this diagram available in the description below. It might be useful to print it off while you're soldering your pedal together. The first thing I did to complete this project was to fill in the hole on my pedal. I taped it off and mixed up some two-part epoxy to fill it in. Once it was dry, I drilled the holes for the input jack, starting with a small pilot hole and then working my way up to a larger bit. I then used 8th inch plywood to cover the sides of the pedal. First I traced it out and then I cut it with a jigsaw. After cutting the first piece, I then used it as a stencil to trace the second piece on another sheet of plywood. I then measured and drilled in the screw holes for the box. To finish off the sides, I then stained it with a walnut colored finish. This gave the wood some character. Now a good tip when staining is to apply the stain against the grain. And when you wipe the stain off, you want to wipe off with the grain. This allows for the stain to seep into the grain of the wood. I then removed the LEDs from the old circuit board. To speed up this process, I add some solder to the LED to heat it up faster. Since I was here, I also removed the DC jack from this old chipboard. I measured out the size of the DC input on the wooden side piece and then drilled it out. I then filed out the corners to make the input fit perfectly. Once the input fit, I then held it in with some hot glue. I wanted to make sure that the input didn't move when I was plugging it in. Once this was done, the shell of my foot pedal was finished. To find out which end of the LED was positive and which end was negative, I used a 9 volt battery. I then soldered the resistor onto the positive end of the LED. Once this was done, I then began soldering using the schematic that I made as a guide.
While I was soldering, I wanted to make sure that all the wires were the appropriate length so they all fit into the box. It's important to make sure that your solders are all clean. And to make sure that none of the wires touched, I used some heat shrink to clean up the wiring. Once all the soldering was done, I then took it out of the case and then sanded the case. From here I added a couple coats of black spray paint to finish it off. Once the paint dried, I then added all the wiring back into the foot pedal. I used hot glue to hold back some of the wires. Once I tested the pedal to make sure it worked, I then added the remaining covers. And after a couple screws, it was done. So this was a super fun project. It was actually the first guitar pedal that I've ever made. And immediately after I made this one, I actually made another one. This is the same idea, it just doesn't have two LEDs and it doesn't indicate which channel you're being plugged into. After finishing it, I added some channel indicators here to show which channel I'm plugged into and all that. So I hope you like this project and uh, I'll be out with some more project videos later on. Take it easy.